know, who may be here, who may speak, we're not sure. Uh, and if I left, and we have a, another councilman who's going to speak, so I wasn't planning to recognize him right now, but we're going to call him in just a minute. Uh, so, let's begin the presentations to the board for me. The audience. I would just, I, if anybody hasn't signed up, please do so right now if you want to speak. There's the uh, sign that she will call on people more or less in the order that they signed up, not always. Uh, and I would just ask that you speak very clearly and carefully, spell your names for uh, Howard and uh, if you have a handout, give it to uh, Chuck Lesnick so that he can pass it along to the board members. Uh, as we did last year, we'll ask that speakers go to themselves, individuals go themselves to uh, three minutes and representatives for organizations in uh, giving five minutes. So please try to confine yourselves to Good evening to members of the board as well as everyone who is present. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak this evening. First, I would like to congratulate all of the members. Uh, first, on first those who have been appointed, uh, newly appointed for two of you, uh, one first time appointee, and for the rest of you for being reappointed uh, recently. Congratulations, and I look forward to uh, the work that you're going to do together. I am the councilman here in the city of Yonkers representing the first district. And uh, representing the first district, I represent a large number of renters. Uh, I also have, obviously, a large number of home ownership. But this evening, we're here specifically about those in my district who rent. People who rent uh, often are, make, are doing that because they don't have the option to buy. Some do and choose to rent. Others have to rent because of their financial situation. And often the financial situation that many of these people are in leaves them in a place where they are living uh, check to check, week to week. And in the economy that we're in, although we are starting to come back and starting to see some increases uh, in the economy around us, the last to see those increases and the last to benefit are those who are at lower wage jobs and tend to be renters. So I urge you all as you consider what a one year lease or a two year lease would look like with uh, regard to increases, um, I urge you all to consider and realize um, that. Excuse me, let me interrupt you. Can, absolutely. Uh, I know we're not in the theater, but we might as well be. Can you all turn off your phones, please, or put them on? I don't know, bugs or whatever Vibrate. they do. Vibrate. Vibrate. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, to realize that those who are at the lower end, those who are at the lower end of uh, our economy, um, need to make sure that they have a good, decent place uh, to live and to raise their families. And to do that requires rents that are affordable, uh, rents that remain affordable as they continue to live in these places. Uh, if we, if everyday people are not seeing increases in their salary, uh, then it is difficult to, for them to adjust their uh, budgets to the reality which may be an increase in their rent, uh, which is obviously difficult to uh, manage. Unfortunately, uh, from my standpoint, there are other ways where owners have the ability to uh, raise revenue um, from those who are renting in their buildings. Uh, things like uh, MCI, the, uh, oh, excuse me, um, major capital improvements, yes, MCI, uh, where owners can make improvements to their, to their building and because it's a capital improvement added on to the rent and although the boiler may take 10 years to pay off, it remains uh, an addition on their rent uh, to the end of time. Things like that 
are, you know, unfortunate loopholes that currently do exist. And so while things like that are being worked on on the state level and on other levels of government, I urge that this body uh, understand that keeping an affordable uh, price of rent, uh, no increase at all, keeping things flat is probably the best thing to do, and it is definitely the best way to go for those who are renting. Thank you very much for the time. I appreciate uh, your listening this evening. Uh, Alana Chufatelli. <coughs> Good evening. Thank you for your time. My name is Alana Chufatelli. I'm a real estate insurance broker and co-chair of the Apartment Owners Advisory Council. I also manage several ETPA regulated apartment buildings that my father built. I'd also ask you to note that when my father built the buildings, ETPA was enacted around him. My family and I are the type of landlords that this industry needs. We care about our tenants. We communicate with them. We realize that a relationship is a give and take. We run a very tight ship. I have no violations on my buildings. We are extremely hands-on. We do not have uh, problems, per se, that we can't address with our tenants. If an issue arises, I take care of it immediately. If one of my tenants comes to me stating that they're having a bit of trouble paying their rent, rather than take them to court and make a bad situation worse, I initiate a payment plan that we can both agree to. This practice has kept me out of the landlord-tenant court since 2008 and kept my tenants in the apartments. I realize that giving, your please. I realize that giving good service as a landlord will attract good tenants. Materials that you wish to take home, please bring them to the first floor circulation desk, 5745. All printing, personal computer projects, and book sale purchases must also be completed by 745. It's not that we need to hear that. It's that the court no, reporter to, needs no to problem. hear you. <laughs> I was saying that if my tenants have a bit of trouble paying their rent, rather than make a bad situation worse and rush to court, I'll have them agree to a payment plan that we can both live with. This practice has kept me out of the city court of Yonkers since 2008. I realize that by giving good services as a landlord, I will attract good tenants who will take care of their apartments. I also want to make a point to sitting here saying that you know you want a zero increase. Unfortunately, we don't have zero increases on our fixed expenses, i.e. taxes, insurance, and what have you. And I can appreciate everybody's position about sitting here saying, you know, zero, zero, but that affects the tenants as well as us as owners because I can't give services if there's no money to pay for those services. And I don't want tenants living in a building that I consider subpar. That being said, uh, tonight, I just wanted to, that's a little sidestep uh, in relation to the previous speaker. Unfortunately though, DHCR in this system is forcing smaller landlords like myself out of the industry due to the constant enactment of low rent guidelines and the lack of what I address as low rents. As such, I'm once again here to speak for the need of a low rent guideline. Case in point, we have a 21 family in Yonkers, of which 15% has units that are well below market. For example, 2A, which is a two bedroom, is paying $405.41 a month, when the market rent is $1,600. That's $1,194.59 below market. Unit 1F, also a two bedroom, paying $721.17. The market rent also here is $1,600. That's $878.83 below market. Each year we ask the question, why should those paying rents at market subsidize those rents that are well below market? After all, we pay market rates for gas, insurance, taxes, overall repairs at the property, etc. My family and I have gone above and beyond to keep the level of services at our, our complex up to par, but it's simply too much. Because with most smaller landlords, there's simply not enough to go around. You see, when you have a type of loss that's created by a low rent, the market rents can't subsidize those that are above market because there's not enough units. At the end of the day, the numbers are black and white and a loss is a loss. Every year I've spoken at these hearings, I state that the failure to properly address those low rents, coupled with very low rent guidelines, is forcing smaller landlords like myself out of the industry. Therefore, what can be done? If these buildings are a co-op or a condo, we have an assessment. But as you know, we can't do that under ETPA. 
Simply put, I would ask that a separate addendum be added to the legislation to properly address the issue of low rents. Therefore, in addition to a proper increase, you give a low rent guideline to bring these tenants up to market. Also, I'd also like to ask all of the <coughs> council persons and what have you who sit there and suggest a zero increase, that possibly they can give us a credit on our taxes, mm -hmm. which we in turn can pass over to our tenants. It's got to be a give and take. You can't simply keep coming after us to make up the difference. Thank you. Uh, wait, before you sit down, do, uh, board members, questions, comments? I'll ask every speaker, uh, just wait before you sit down when you're finished sure. so that Sorry. the, uh, the board evening. can ask questions. Good evening. The, the two apartments that you mentioned, how long have those tenants been in those apartments? Over 20 years. In both? both yes, yes, yes. 20 over 20, I'm not sure exactly, but over 20 years. Are they, are they seniors? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Sure. What percentage of your tenants would you say will be low market rate? On that building, 15%. 15%. Yes. Anybody else? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Giuffratelli. Um, is there a Carol Barksdale or Barksdale? Uh, well, if you don't want to speak, I, I'm sorry, this really isn't the appropriate place for a question. This, this public hearing is so that people can address the board concerning the uh, rent increases or not. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Lloyd Roberts. Lloyd Roberts? Good afternoon to the members of the board and to all in attendance. As everyone knows, my name is Lloyd Roberts. I am living at 300 North Broadway, and that's one of the first buildings in Yonkers that actually went off with an eviction plan, which I spoke before this board before, and that was the building that actually changed the tour in Yonkers as far as buildings going off with eviction plans. I've been living in that building over 38 years and my complaint really in regards to the rent increases is that I'm the sorry, maintenance you, you can't is my hear? concern. Yeah. You can't hear? Testing, testing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, can, the we move, can we move the um, No, he's talking to us. I want to hear. Well, I thought maybe you can move the code. Okay. No, just this is better direction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like I was saying, uh, my building was the first building in Yonkers that went co-op with an eviction plan. At first it was actually an eviction plan and then with the help of the tenants, everything actually went back to non-eviction and it was the first building. But my concern really, because it's only three minutes that I have, will be in regards to the maintenance. And that's really what I really am here to address because I'm living in a building that we have like two building managers. You have one for the co-op, you have one for the tenants. The one for the tenants, he doesn't do anything because he's telling us that he has to go through the managing agent and the managing agent is one that we can never ever get to. What I did in regards to trying to prove my point, I actually did not write any form of lecture or speeches. I brought pictures so that I could actually show what I'm referring to. And this is just some of the pictures that I've been trying to get done for almost two months now. I call it in and it's two months that, these, that this work has not been done. It includes a ceiling that's falling, that's falling because of a radiator on the top floor that was leaking and the water came in. It involves a bathroom where the shower is not uh, actually operating properly because the button that you have to pull, which is actually here, the button that you have to pull, which is actually here, is actually not working. I've been trying to get the building manager for the tenants to actually look at this, and it's two months now. I'm not able to get anyone. I don't see how I could support a rent increase allow any kind of rent increases when I am really have to go through this type of thing. Because I keep calling, I get no response. I mentioned the toilet, that means a flushometer. It was actually working for a little time. 
it actually stopped working. The way I have to flush the toilet, which I have my grandkids, my wife, and anyone that comes to the apartment, I have to use a bucket, fill it with water in the bathtub, and then pour it into flushing. Mm -hmm. So this is what it has gotten to. I'm not saying they might not fix it at some point in time, but that's when they get to me. When is that, I don't know. But I've been calling, 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 and how can you ask for an increase when you have to go through this type of situation? That's three minutes if you could wrap it up. I'm sorry? That was the three minute clock. The chair will be guided. Okay. Well, this is basically what I have to basically say. And one thing, one point I'll try to get across, because I could steer you all day and run the whole thing to you guys. But one point what I really wanted to say too also is that this is a legal document. I had this for years from the Attorney General, who was Robert Abrams at the time in New York City. And this document will show you directly what some landlords, I'm not going to say all, because I'm not going to blame everyone, okay, but this will show you up, what some landlords will do just to get funds by doing the things that is in here. I won't get in the point of discussing it at this point, but this is just a legal document that anyone ever wanted to take a look at this would see what actually caused the building at 300 North Broadway to be reverted back to an eviction plan because it's all in here. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Does anybody have any questions, comments? Is he going to submit the pictures and the letter? It doesn't look like he had copies for the board. You guys can keep these. I have to keep those. I have copies of my Okay, we'll ask the division to make copies for the board members, and we'll get them at a, you know, the next uh, Another hearing. Thank you. Uh, Rachel Estroff is here on behalf of Assembly Member Shelley Mayer. My name is Rachel Estroff. Good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of Assembly Member Shelley Mayer tonight. As an Assembly Member representing Yonkers, I express my concerns about any potential rent increase for tenants in the apartments regulated under Emergency Tenant Protection Act. In our county. As I work in Albany's strength and the protections for tenants, I ask you to do your part to ensure my constituents, who make up the vast majority of Westchester residents protected by ETPA, have an affordable place to live. The New York State Assembly passed a strong bill extending rent the state rent regulations and the Emergency Tenant Protection Act until June 2019. This bill repeals vacancy deregulation and reforms provisions surrounding major capital improvements, making MCI rent increases, temporary surcharges, disappearing once a landlord has recovered the cost of the improvement, and the 6% cap on annual collectibilities extended to three suburban ETPA counties, replacing the current 15% cap. Strengthening the laws surrounding rent regulation is not under your purview, but I raise it here today because until those laws are changed, Halting the annual increase provides residents the greatest protection against excessive rents. Moreover, preventing increases allows us to maintain the stock of rent-stabilized units, which has seen a rapid decline since vacancy decontrol was introduced in suburban communities. In 1997, Westchester had 31,916 ETPA-protected units. And in 2014, the number had dropped to 25,562. We have a tremendous challenge in that each rent increase, whether it's an annual increase or a less conspicuous major capital improvement or vacancy bonus, brings the unit closer to losing the protections of ETPA. We're facing a severe crisis in housing affordability across the state where many people have seen their real incomes decline over the past few years. Too many in Westchester, particularly in Yonkers, are struggling to make ends meet. In Westchester, where over 50% of the rental households are paying more than 30% of their income on housing, deemed an affordability threshold by the federal government, this is a crisis leading to unsafe living conditions and too many families struggling simply to stay afloat. Unfortunately, many of our residents are driven from the region or find themselves in unfaced, unsafe housing or are simply unable to invest in our local economies because they are spending too much of their income on housing and don't have enough disposable income remaining. This is particularly true for Yonkers residents who earn significantly less than the Westchester or well, household median income. 
I urge you to consider the challenge my constituents experience in the face of eroding incomes and increasing rental costs. I'm mindful of and sensitive to the expenses faced by property owners, particularly small owners. But I note that the current economic recovery is simply too fragile and too slow to justify an increase. Thank you. Do you, do you have oh, copies sorry. for the board by any chance? And does any board member have a question or comment? Mr. Cherson. Thank you. Um, I know you got the assembly yes. woman, so it's a little bit difficult. But, and I assume that she wrote what you presented. But I have a question for you. You're certainly familiar with the fact that taxes in Yonkers and other municipalities are going up, or et cetera. And you said that a zero increase will maintain the housing stock. How is that possible? Well, I'm because not... the, the taxes go up, the insurance goes up. Yes, things may go up less because of the economic climate. But how are owners, they have to buy supplies, they have to buy oil, they have to buy all the, to fix things, tools, whatever. So if it's a zero increase, how does that maintain the housing stock? Well, I do, I mean, I keep in mind I'm representing her, so I need to be, you know, be aware of them. But I think that her concern is that these residents in particular have not seen their incomes increase. So to ask it to come from them is just not, is not a fair part of the equation. And I think the other piece is that it's not necessarily, this is not the only source of an increase because of the MCIs, which you know, we've tried to actually do some analysis and try to figure out how much rents have gone up based on MCIs and kind of have a harder time figuring that out. But it's another piece that, you know, that that is a piece that has increased their rents as well. So I think it's, uh, I think the, the suggestion would be that, it, it, you know, it can't come from them. That's the, the, the problem. Where is it supposed to come from? Well, it's, I mean, it has come from MCI, it's come from other, other sources and an as well. MCI, as you know, an MCI is a, a boiler or a new roof. So the landlord is putting out $40,000 for a boiler or for a new roof. So all he's doing is getting back that money. No, 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 for the that's new roof. initially. That's initially what happens. A long but time. The, yeah. Absolutely. And, and I think that part of the, her support of the assembly bill that allows it to be paid off and then it goes away. But it doesn't go away now. I mean, that's the whole point. It gets rolled into their rent. So that's that's the concern, I think, is that there are other sources of increases that, that, that uh, you know. And, and I mean, it's, it, I think the same way that we have been asking more of other people, I think it's, it's this is just not a, a, a place where we can squeeze it from, is, would be your suggestion. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening. Would the assemblywoman support a subsidy for the landlords to uh, take care of the increase in expenses on buildings, for example, where there aren't those extra MCI increases? I can certainly ask her. That I can't. I mean, I can't answer that for her. I can certainly ask her about that. Thank you. How are you, Ravikov? Good evening. My name is Howie Ravikoff. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. I trust you'll hear me, and I trust you'll understand the issues from my perspective, and for this I'm greatly appreciative. I'd like to acknowledge once again the difficult task you have ahead of you. We've heard some interesting things tonight. Each year you hear two sides of the same story. I imagine it's very frustrating for you to review the situation, the same situation, and have to make a decision that affects so many apartment dwellers, maintenance workers, repairmen, construction crews, office help, and property owners. Each year, I wonder why Albany hasn't simplified this process for you. Why isn't there a formula to establish a rent guideline between HUD and the CPI and a few other readily available and accepted barometers? Albany should pass a law to create a guideline or at least a narrow range of a guideline for this board to review and finalize. I find this process to be archaic, and I commend you and your willingness to engage in it and take it to fruition. My hat is off to you. Here's my story, if you don't already know it. My family owns a 29-unit apartment building in the village of Porchester. We, too, 
run a decent building. We care about our tenants, and I do exactly what my father taught me to do. We service the tenants to death. The vast majority of our tenants understand who we are, and they understand how we choose to run our building. They see how we're different from the fly-by-nights, from some of the new landlords in our community, and they recognize that we're not the slumlords of New York City. They appreciate and value what we do, and they refer their family and their friends to us in this building and other smaller buildings that we have in the village of Porchester. Here's an outline of what I'd like to call your attention to this evening. There's three points. Water, weather, and the Mrs. Lazama factor. Water. Since we last met, the village of Porchester, like many municipalities in this county, has enacted a law charging all property owners, multiple family, single family, commercial, all property owners now pay a sewer rent. If you don't know what this means in a nutshell, the sewer drain system in Porchester is ancient and it's far past its useful life. It needs to be replaced. The money for this replacement is coming from this new revenue stream called sewer rents. If your local municipality hasn't introduced it yet, trust me, it's on their minds. The bottom line, my water bill is up 54% from $13,000 to $20,000, non-negotiable. Point two, weather and fuel. Every year this board reviews the rate of fuel. It's an important factor, not trying to detract from the rate of the fuel. But how often do you talk about weather? We had another brutal winter. It started early and it lasted long. I burned 9,000 gallons of fuel this year. I burned 7,300 gallons of fuel last year. 25% increase year over year. The rate is about the same. 25% increase in my cost. May I have your attention, please? The library will be closing in 14 minutes. If you have materials to check out, please bring it to the first floor circulation desk at this time. All personal computer projects must also be completed at this time. The book sale is closed. The library will be open tomorrow at 9 a.m. Have a good evening. Thank you for your patience. The bottom line, what I'd like you to recognize, my bottom line went down 29% year over year. The costs are astronomical. They're new costs. They're costs we cannot control. The third item, if I may, Madam Chair, may I continue? Yes. The Mrs. Lazama factor. Last year and the year before, I talked to you about Mrs. Lazama. She pays $757.23 per month for the same apartment above her, which pays $1,650 a month. She pays a monthly rent that's 66% of market rate for the same apartment directly above her. The costs associated with her apartment, the taxes, the insurance, the fuel, the water, all of the costs are market rate. They're not commensurate with her rent. Ideally, I'd ask you to address those costs. Give me a tax break, we've heard that a couple of times tonight. Reduce my assessment, something to balance off these two factors. The state mandates ETPA, the state should make up the cost. But I understand, you don't have the power to do that. What you have the power to do is give us a rent increase, and that's what I'm asking for. A guideline that will bring the market rate rent near to the market rate costs. I understand it. It's absurd what I'm asking you for. I understand the system to be absurd. I have no choice. I'm asking for a 217% increase or $892.77, whichever is greater. Thank you very much. Thank you. Reverend Lupton Wood. How many tenants do you have, like the, the, the lady that you mention every year that is a senior citizen that you're waiting to expire? Uh, I don't view my role with her tenancy that way at all. I take offense to it. I care about Mrs. Lazama. I see her at least once a month. I care about all my tenants, even if I'm going to court with them. How many senior tenants do you have? I don't take a, a, a role of their age, ma'am. I'm sorry, that's not part of what I do. I have at least three tenants. I have at least three tenants whose, whose rent is similar to hers. I have other tenants who are also below market, but not to the same extreme. I will rephrase the question. How long has she been a tenant? We bought the building in 1971. Mrs. Lazama was in that building when we bought the building. 
Anybody else? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Kevin Martin? Kevin Martin? Good evening, board members. Um, my concern is uh, somewhat with a uh, councilman member. Uh, my uh, constituent, my, my concern is dealing with the, the, the homelessness and the, uh, and the uh, disability disabled and where they asking for rent increases where people can hardly maintain their rent now with the, with the, with the, with the, what we have today. So you ask for rent increases and people are not being raised, uh, they are not being raised. But now you can honestly, there's an over, hope there's a number of people homeless such as me and my wife because of the, the, uh, the, the, the rent increase and in the, in the, in the, in the Raising of the rent and the slum laws of the day, where you pay it for two bedrooms, sixteen hundred dollars, and the youngest two bedrooms, sixteen hundred dollars, one bedroom, thirteen hundred dollars for one bedroom, and 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 it's not and the, the, the landlord that you have today are not living up to the standards of of the uh, municipal that the well laws such as uh, eight two eighty six two eighty four. A lot of them don't have to take the occupancy to run these buildings, and they don't have a number of different things. But yet they, they, they take you to rent tenant courts, and when you bring the, the, the evidence to the prove that the building is dilapidated, it, 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 it's, it's absurd. And yeah, my wife had two surgeries on her knee because of a building, but yet she got evicted. And, and she's here to prove that. And yeah, we talk about raising rent and who was going to. Uh, Look at the landlords in, in terms of the, uh, the, the looking at the, the law and what the legislators are established, right? Like the only one I see had a plausible thing up here. I asked anybody with the Senator Myers, uh, what she she speaks about, you know, not raising the door the rent and keeping the regulation, which is which is what they need, instead as opposed to taking away from some people that doesn't have enough to pay. Ain't there because they because the living laws in the economy today. That's what we need to look at, as opposed to trying to hold people accountable for things that they can't even afford today. You know, like such as what me and my wife were doing, and we continue to go through. You know, uh, and it, I would it, it, I would urge the you know the board to look at the fact that don't raise them and <laughs> lower them. You know what I'm saying? And so that people, so the the, the, the seniors and the, the, the dis disabled can can they can have something to live on. And be, be comfortable for all the years they work, a lot of years they work, and a lot of retirements today. And, and, and yet, now they're not, they're not being reciprocated for what they've done for the years. A lot of them were school teachers and whatever, and a lot of them did a lot of good things when they were younger. And I, I don't think they should be put, penalized or hurt for today for the thing that they did yesterday. They did nothing but help, and now they're being. Now they're being hurt today. Now I just, I don't want to keep okay. you hurt. I that's, think that's not. three yeah, minutes, yeah, uh, Mr. Martin. Uh, Cynthia Miller. Congressman Nickel, but today I'm here as a tenant. I live at 300 North Broadway in Yonkers here. Um, twofold. As a caseworker, I get to see the public more so, and I hear of some of the things that people are going through. We know that there is a lot of homeless out here, but we know also that a lot of people have lost their apartment because they're working, but because of illness or something that has happened, they have lost their apartment. And it saddens me. I've been in my building 34 years, and there are times I can't even meet the rent. So this affects a lot of people. So when we say 
that we don't want or we would like the rent to be zero. It's because people aren't making ends meet. It's not just with the work, it's also transportation. Some people go to the city so they have double costs. It is just outrageous. And this is economics. This is what is happening in our society. But unfortunately, it affects everyone. And you know, you may not be there now, but you don't know what tomorrow holds. So all I say is, when, you, when the board looks at the facts, take that into consideration. And believe me, I had a woman who was worked for years and years and even with social service and everything, she's not getting the assistance she needs. Our office tried to help, but there are some things because, I don't even have to go into it, but there are some things that you can't surpass because of law. So all I can say is please think of considering zero rent, that people, because of the cost of living, are basically, it's very difficult. Thank you. Any uh, comments, questions from board I'm members? Sorry. That's okay. It doesn't look like anybody has any questions for you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Miller. Uh, how, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Matt Persons. Matt, where are you? Good evening. My name is Matthew Persenis. I'm an attorney and I'm labor counsel to the BRI. Uh, as labor counsel to the BRI, I'm responsible for negotiating the collective bargaining agreement with Local 32BJ, which represents approximately 85% of the workers that work in and around the buildings in Westchester County. Uh, by far, the BRI agreement, as it's known, is the standard and the economics of that agreement are followed by almost 100% of the independent contracts. Uh, when I speak about the, the economics of that collective bargaining agreement, I'm talking about approximately 90% of all building service workers in Westchester County. Last October, October, 14, October 1st, 2014, we finished a new collective bargaining agreement, which will be for four years, and during that, we came to an agreement on a 2.58% increase to the wages. We came to an increase of 3.5% for health coverage and 7% for the pension. And you're probably wondering why would we give such a large increase to pension. Uh, unfortunately, as with many ERISA plans, the pension plan is pension under the Pension Protection Act, and the 7% increase was denoted by law, so we had no other way to get around that. Uh, that was the minimum increase that was allowed. What that meant was each employer, which is the owner of the buildings in Westchester County, is facing a 2.8% overall increase for their labor costs. Uh, labor costs make up approximately 60% of the cost of the building. This is in line with what has been done in the past. Uh, we had approximately the same increases in 2014, and we'll have about the same in 2016. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Just the facts. It took me by surprise. Anybody have any comments or questions for Mr. Personis? I just have a question. Do you happen to have a copy of uh, the statistics that you just uh, shared with us? I have the highlights, uh, okay. but I, I don't have the collective bargaining agreement in comparisons with formal ones. Yeah. I can give that to you. Yeah, you know, what? if you can do that, yeah. the, uh, the division can make copies for the full board. I made copies. Oh, you made okay. copies. Good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you. If anybody emails me stuff, I will also distribute it to the board and I have cards here for the other ones. Oh, As I said, it's just a, a highlight reel, so to speak. Emails. People don't speak. What? He says he's going to be distributing emails for people who email him and people don't speak. No, that's that seems that's to be it. it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, next, um, somebody, uh, Mitchell, is there a, there's just one name on here, it says Mitchell. Is there somebody named Mitchell, first name, last name, who wants to speak? I guess not. Okay. Uh, is there a William Yamley, Yankee? Yancey, William Yancey. And thank you. You didn't indicate if you're a, a tenant or an owner uh, representative. Oh, sorry, find that soon enough. We'll find that soon enough. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Yancey. Good evening, everybody. And I think well, what I want to say is most of what everybody said. I mean, I think we got to call the bottom line that, I mean, we need affordable housing. I'm a tenant. And, you know, it's just it's hard to call to have, you call rent in Yonkers. You know, and we need more, we need more affordable housing in Yonkers. We need, you know, we don't need our rents to go up. I mean, this is, I mean, by having more affordable, we need more affordable housing because, you know, without affordable housing, higher rent, it affects our seniors, it affects, we call it, people that are disabled, it affects people that are families, even it affects, we call it, college students that are coming out of college. You know, it has to be some kind of, it has to be some kind of thing that we can be, you call it some kind of margin that we can, we can meet at because it's just, it's just not affordable. We, we're spending more, people that I speak to in young they say they spend more on transportation and childcare and food. Everything is going up, and realize, landlords have to realize, I'm sorry, but you have to realize that you call it, everything is going up, but people's salaries are not going up. You know, we still make people, you call it, spend, we call it, whatever salary we get, we live in, we gotta get the rich hill to get to the working rich hill, we gotta get the white plans to work in, and all that, all that money is going towards transportation and childcare. People just can't afford to, to live in the honors. You know, and if, if you keep, if you keep on, if you keep raising it, people will start moving out. And we've seen this happen and we call it times come. People start moving to Jersey, they start moving down south, because why we just can't afford to live here. So I just want you to take into this consideration of who you're affecting. You know, and, and you it's just it's just too much. And I think you call when you come into a business, I think these are consequences that you have to call, take in consideration, that you're gonna have food costs and, and all these other all these other you call all these costs, but people are just not can't pay. And you have more homeless people out here. And youngers, I think this is supposed to be the, what the, we call the, to the artists, they want to have more feet, artists is painting outside the youngers. Why? Because they can't afford to live in youngers. Well, that's my time. I think everything is said. I think we hear about five people saying, you call it that, um, that they, we call it that they, you know, that they, we call it, they, that they can't afford it. I think y'all should start listening to that. You know, I think we should start, we call it, have an ear. If we've been on this board 24 years, let's take this stuff in consideration. I mean, if three, four people say it look like a horse, I think it's a horse. <laughs> the people say they can't afford to live here, I think they can't afford to start. There's no common sense here. Thank you for your time. Okay. Any, looks like there are no questions for Mr. Yancey. I think our final speaker is Ken Nilsson. Oh, I take it back. You're not our final speaker. especially in, uh, in Yonkers. Uh, what this tabulation shows very quickly is that there have been dramatic increases in water costs, which used to be a relatively minor thing, and now it's becoming an increasingly costly item. Uh, the rates in Yonkers for water increased from a dollar, this is in, in eight years, from 2007 to 2014, from a dollar 15 per 
uh, 100 cubic feet to $2.93. And the sewer rate, which Howie was talking about in, uh, uh, in Port Chester, they just instituted, well, it's been in Yonkers for a long time, uh, increased from 35 cents to 63 cents. If you add it all up, there's been a 137% increase in eight years in the cost of water in the city of Yonkers. So if you look at the bottom comparison, the rent guidelines in that period have gone up for a one-year lease, 17%, and for two-year guidelines, adjusting it for, for, uh, for, for each year, would be going up 13%, as compared to 137% in, in water. So the whole point is that water is going up a lot faster than the CPI, then the guideline increases. And I, and I love it when the government representatives come here and call for a zero guidelines, but at the same time, they continue to, to increase our costs. Our single largest costs are taxes and fees by the government. The, now the government is, like Yonkers, is limited by the 2% tax cap. So what they've found are ways to increase their revenue by non-tax. Item. So they're increasing the water rates. So that's, that's one thing that you can take a look at. The second thing has to do with taxes. We just got the county taxes for the city, for, uh, which are billed through the city of Yonkers. Uh, and county taxes, which you know, our uh, county executive will say, are going down. That's a wonderful thing. However, it goes through Yonkers. And Yonkers is always looking for money. Chuck Lesnick, you know, as, as a council member knows. Please, if you want to ride, bye. So when I looked carefully at it, I realized that the Yonkers, which always had a very strange thing called a safety inspection fee, they used to be about $625. They doubled it to $1,250. Uh, they increased the sewer valuation. So the bottom line in my Westchester County tax, which was supposed to go down by 1%, the total cost of that bill was up by 3.8%. So what's happening in, 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 in the tax cap that's applied throughout New York State is that now the governments, including Yonkers, is shifting into fees. So we're still paying more for the city, of, you know, for, for Yonkers, uh, for, for taxes, uh, more than the 2% tax cap. And all of this gets passed along. This is something we have no control over, uh, either water or, or sewer or taxes and fees from the city. And we're asking that this be passed along. We're just collectors of it uh, because we have to pay it to the, to the city. So uh, I, I, I'd love to have somebody, one of the representatives from the, from the politicians, to respond to that and say, how can we, uh, you, uh, they ask for a zero guideline on one hand, whereas on the other hand, they're increasing our costs. So I think I finished before the three, percent, three minute uh, guideline, so I'm, I'm open to questions. I have a question. Yes. Um, what percentage, uh, if you know, of your uh, total, ex the landlord's total expenses uh, represents the water bill? The water Plus bill, the water our total, I, I put it in the thing, I did the calculations, mm -hmm. it's about 2.6% of the total, of our total expenses. Oh, okay. It's hidden in, in, in the, in, I haven't seen the, the tabulation yet, I'm sure you haven't either. Uh, and it's, it's basically hidden in the utilities account. Uh, the, the uh, ETPA doesn't ask us to split it out. It may be time to do that because that's one of the things that's happening is that that utility cost is increasing faster than some of the other utility costs. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Any more questions? I do. Yes. Mr. Nielsen, how many buildings do you own? Uh, eight Yonkers? buildings in Yonkers. In Yonkers. Are they, are they mostly on the west side? Or yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? Any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know that we have two more speakers. I, I, there's another sheet that I have seen. Uh, Jacqueline 
Smith. I'm not affiliated with any organization, but I did uh, used to attend CVH meetings, and I know when they were talking about the caps on um, what they expected the builders who were coming in to do 10% low-income housing, and the rest could be at market rates, when that seems an absurd amount to me, because when you look at it, the people in poverty are more like at least 80% or more, so I think that they should be equalized in order to make it a reasonably fair thing for the poor people because everywhere you go, they're trying to squeeze out the poor one way or another. And, um, you know, my landlord doesn't do maintenance very well. Like, my ceiling caved in front of my door three times, the ceiling caved down in, in the bathroom three times, and a mega amount of other issues. And so because I went to the, um, the the building inspectors and stuff, I got retaliated. And now I'm in court with my landlord, and he won't give DSS a, um, a rent workup. And I was told by the DSS worker today, literally, uh, because if they want to tenant out, they won't cooperate, so that when you get to court, you have nothing to show. And I think it's disgusting that the landlords in the city can become, slum, you know, slumlords easily, but fighting back against these slumlords, there is nobody who will lift up their finger and help the person who's struggling against this huge power. And um, my landlord acts like a mafia, really. Like, he has... Um, people working for him who, who are like really tough guys and stuff but it, when you get your rent bill you don't get an address they don't give you the address to the office they give you a p.o box they want to avoid any issues with the tenants and they literally do but a lot of people have moved out of the building we froze out like uh when it was going to be 27 degrees i wound up in the mayor's office and they had to call the landlord because what you do is when you call the number for the management company, you get an answering service and they do not return phone calls. Any questions for uh, excuse me? Ma'am, would you feel comfortable telling us your address? Fifteen dash twenty one Carroll Avenue. It's um, Demon Properties. They spell it with a D H I M. I spell it with a D E M O N. Okay. And our final speaker, Tamara Stewart. What's a Tamara the picture. I can't remember. Is Tamara or Tamara? Tamara. Yeah, I was right. Thank you. Just to use the way I do. Yes. Good evening, board members, advocates, and my fellow citizens. My name is Tamara Stewart, and I live at 30 Park Avenue in the Westchester Plaza complex in Mount Vernon. This important hearing is being held for the purpose of helping the Westchester Rent Guidelines Board determine the appropriate rate of rent increases on one and two year lease renewals beginning in October. One of the variables that I hope this board is factoring into its decision is tenants' ability to pay for the increases that the board adopts. As one of the county's hardworking civil servants, I can honestly tell you that I can't afford to pay more than I'm already paying for rent. Presently, I'm working as a library clerk at Rye High Middle School, making $39,000 a year. My rent is currently almost $1,500 a month, well over half my take-home pay. While I continue to diligently seek better paid employment, like many of my fellow blue and white collar colleagues, I'm finding good paying jobs hard to come by. Budget cuts, union contracts that go unrenewed, 
or include no cost of living increases, and economic policies that heavily favor those who make money on investments rather than respecting those who actually work for a living, have seriously eroded the earning power of low and middle income employees. Like many of my fellow civil servants, I'm performing a job that was once done by three people, but only earning one small paycheck. Unlike many of my fellow low-wage workers, I'm fortunate to have a good education and a wealth of skills that I've honed over the years. Not only have I completed a bachelor's degree, but I also have completed two master's degrees, one in library science and the other in business administration. Like many of my fellows, however, I've gone through some extremely tough times over the past 10 to 15 years. I've experienced three periods of long-term unemployment, each of which lasted for over a year, and one of which lasted for almost two years. At my earning peak in 2010, when I was working as a professional librarian, I was on track to earn more than $70,000 a year. After losing that job, however, I have been unable to secure a job that pays anywhere near that amount and find myself earning roughly the same $40,000 a year that I was earning 20 years ago. In fact, this is the third time in 20 years that I find myself working my way up from $40,000 a year. Given that I earned both of my master's degrees during this 20-year interval, the stubborn plateau in my earnings is even more frustrating. While not all tenants are struggling to pay increasing rents with decreasing purchasing power, far too many of us are. Far too many workers are toiling longer and longer hours and doing more and more work for less pay and fewer benefits. While this body has no control over the lopsided economy and its shameful favoritism of the wealthy over everyone else, you do have it in your power not to make things even harder for everyday people like me, who are just trying to make a living keep a roof overhead, and eat every now and then. Please, I urge you, pass 0% increases for the 2015-2016 renewal period. Thank you in advance for your thoughtful consideration and for doing a difficult yet important job. Westchester tenants are counting on you to do the right thing. Amen. Thank you. Any questions, comments from the board members? Thank you very much, Ms. Stewart. Uh, that concludes the list of people who signed in, but if there's anybody who wants to speak, let me give you uh, one last chance to come up. I don't uh, see anybody. I move to adjourn. So, well, just, we're going to adjourn in just a minute, but let, let me just. Uh, Excuse me. Maybe some of those people who went over here three minutes would like to finish. Mm. I think I think everybody finished. Uh, we were not we were we were quite flexible in uh, in the time. I before we adjourn, I just want to uh, announce that the there's another public hearing tomorrow in um, Mount Vernon City Hall. Uh, the public hearing in White Plains is Monday, June 8th, a week from today, and it's going to be at White Plains City Hall, not the usual place which has been the courthouse. So White Plains City Hall, 255 Main Street. That's the third and final public hearing. Uh, the board is meeting in the offices of the uh, division uh, on South Broadway on Thursday, June 4th, when we expect to have the uh, schedules uh, to go over and staff members uh, from the division will be available to uh, explain them and we'll be able to talk about them. So, of course, that's a public meeting and uh, anybody is welcome to come. Where is Okay. That's at 75 South Broadway, the offices of the DHCR on the third floor. It's Can I ask you a question? Uh, we'll see. Try. <laughs> What's your question? Uh, the last time I came to your meeting here, I met somebody who was like the director of your group or something, and he said, just call our office and we'll help you get, you know, a chance to get your rent held or something because you're not getting the work done. And... It didn't work. Well, that doesn't sound like a question. It sounded like a statement. But after the meeting, if you want to, you can talk to uh, Chuck Lesnick. 
Uh, okay, so the June 4th meeting is, uh, is, is uh, <clears throat> excuse me, for the board and, and uh, the public, uh, if they want to come, not to participate, but to listen. Uh, Tuesday, June 16th, at the White Plains <coughs> Library Auditorium is the um, owner and tenant presentations. Uh, I think most of you may have been, uh, have heard them in the past. And Monday, June 22nd, is, at White Plains City Hall is, are the rebuttals from the owners and tenants. They will each have an opportunity to speak uh, to re rebut what uh, has been said at the previous meeting. And finally, also, on that date, we will have the uh, discussion and vote on the guidelines. So if uh, anybody wants to come take a look at this, you know, after it, I'll just leave it here for now, and you can see when these meetings are. Uh, yes. I, I just want to emphasize that the meeting on the 16th is at the White Plains Library, yeah. which is different than the meeting on the 22nd of June, as well as the meeting on the 8th, which are at White Plains City Hall. So there are two at City Hall and mm. one at the library. Thank you. So now, I have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn by Mr. Finger. Do we hear a second? Second. Second by Eddie Mae Barnes. All in favor? Aye. 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 I cannot be here. Unanimous. I can't be here.